still testing positive at day six and day seven. So it is an issue, and we have to uh, stick to what um, uh, the government is suggesting to protect the NHS. Uh, Sandesh Gulhani, then uh, you, your reaction, I suppose, listening uh, to, to Professor Michael Griffin there, how many days uh, do you feel is appropriate for, for a close uh, COVID contact where, where we stand at the moment? The most important thing to say is we are not calling for patients with positive uh, lateral flows or positive tests for symptoms to be going back to work. That's simply not the case. What we're saying is we would like asymptomatic to test negative patients who feel fine to be able to go back to work at seven days because there's a lot of evidence out there. <clears throat> there's a groundbreaking study which shows that Omicron is potentially a lot less serious, has a potential significantly lower risk of hospitalization. Um, evidence is out there that says that it is safe to reduce this, num this number from 10 days to seven days. And businesses are suffering from staff absenteeism. And we're seeing that throughout all sectors. So this reduction isn't going to harm anyone, especially if they are not having any symptoms and they are testing negative. So, do, so do, you that know, do, do you know that? Do, do you know that, I do wonder, whether or not a, a, a reduction, as, as we heard Professor Griffin there saying that indeed uh, people are testing positive sometimes six days after infection. So it's impossible to know whether or not a reduction in, in those days would in fact uh, n not harm anyone at all. Uh, and that's the point of doing those tests. And that's the exact point of doing this assess. So the reason um, it is about infectivity. So if you're, you're most infectious a few days before and 48 hours after you've had your symptoms. So that's when you are at your most infected. And that reduces as time goes on. Now, if you are still testing positive on your lateral flows, and you're still testing positive, then clearly you should not be going to work. Clearly you should still be isolating and we should be doing the best that we can to look after you. But... If you don't test positive, if you are taking those tests at day six, day seven, you're not testing positive and you have no symptoms, then you are very unlikely to be infectious because that was back then when you had your symptoms and that was around that time period. So that is why we're able to safely release people. And also that you were having academics saying this as well, that, that it's safe to get people out at seven days. And we're seeing that in England at the moment. And uh, and we're going to be seeing people calling for further measures to, to reduce it in, in other parts of the world where, you know, I think we need a balanced and cautious approach. And that's that seven day seems to strike the balance for me. Uh, we also heard from, from the First Minister today that there will be no further uh, changes in relation to restrictions and the restrictions that we're currently under uh, in Scotland. I, I would imagine you would broadly uh, welcome that news. It, so what I'm worried about is is people finding some rules inconsistent and, and, and not really wanting to follow them because they don't agree, they feel that it's inconsistent. An example uh, is well, the Rangers and Celtic um, fans who are both disgruntled about the fact that there's only 500 people uh, allowed into outdoor events and yet you can go to an indoor shopping arena and have way more people there. I, a fan was saying that Asda was more busy than, than Ibrox was. You know, this is not a situation we want to be in. We need to look after people's mental health, especially as restrictions are continuing. And I'm worried about restrictions tightening in the future. And we need to look after people's mental health because we've seen a deterioration uh, in the past. And as a GP, just today in GP, I have seen people with deteriorating mental health. And so it's important we look after their mental health. Uh, and that's what I'm calling for to, 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 to see how vastly important sport and football is to people and to get them back to doing the things that they value the most uh, and leaving and getting the responsibility to the people to do the things they want to do the most and not do the others. Because what's going to get us out of this pandemic, what's going to get us out of Omicron, is actually being sensible with where you go out and getting your boosters, getting your vaccinations, that wall of resistance and being sensible with your social distancing, wearing your mask and only going out and doing things that, that matter to you that's what's going to protect us and get us the other side.
We, uh, uh, criticism to, uh, for, for, for I, I suppose, for the Scottish government, but the UK government too, around the lack of tests and, and, and rapid uh, tests at the moment. Uh, we spoke um, to uh, a, a, a lady from the uh, from, from the independent, um, multiple for, uh, independent pharmacies association earlier on, who told us that her members were having to turn people away because simply there were not enough tests. So we know that people are having difficulty accessing tests uh, at the moment. Uh, I mean, given that it's a UK wide operation, what responsibility does the UK government have here to make sure there are enough tests, particularly when such an emphasis is being put on people getting tested and testing before they go anywhere? It's vital. Absolutely vital. Uh, uh, We need to ensure that not only are there enough lateral flow tests, but we need to ensure there's enough PCR tests. I I went online uh, myself just before First Minister's questions, and it came up and said there were no PCR tests available for me to have. Um, now, if and, and that, that's in Glasgow. Now, if that is the case for hundreds of thousands of people around the country, then you're going to find that, that, that that's not something that people will find acceptable. People will not accept having to spend extra days in isolation because they can't get tested. And also, there's a whole bunch of people out there that need to get tested really quickly because they provide critical jobs. They prepare the police, the fire service, the NHS. You know, we need these people back out doing their job as soon as possible. Yes, everyone's important, but the critical infrastructure is is vital. So we really absolutely need tests, lateral flows and PCRs to be running. We need that to be working well. Uh, and, and, and it, as I said earlier, is one of the most important ways of getting us out of Omicron. And it doesn't seem to be working particularly well uh, south of the border as well. I mean, we, we're, we're seeing the same scenario, if you, not even a, a worse scenario in, in England. What, what, what is going wrong here for the UK government? What, what have they not taken into account? Have they taken their eyes off the ball here? I'm afraid I don't know the answer to what's going on um, with the UK government as far as the tests. I, I was listening to Jason Leach um, talking about it uh, a little while ago, uh, and he was saying that it, it was a supply, it was just a chain issue, that um, we would be getting the tests in. Um, but I would defer to somebody like Jason Leach uh, of that question. OK, we believe it there. Thank you indeed uh, for your time. That is MSP Sandesh Gulhani there, the Scottish Conservative Health Spokesman.